Hello everyone, back to you in today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's video. We'll also have a look at CFSB2 for the next month. That's just updated. Um, so we'll start off though by having a look at what's happening in the tropical Atlantic Ocean. We uh, had Hurricane Beryl a couple of days ago. That's been downgraded now to um, just an area of storms where it's not doing a great deal. Uh, but we have got another tropical storm. Uh, uh, Chris, and that's quite a long way north actually, uh, and it may get um, upgraded to a hurricane in, in the next uh, few hours. Uh, it shouldn't go much above category one, but as this, uh, and when it get downgraded again later in the week as it gets up towards Canada, um, but as this gets caught up in the jet stream, it may well be the first uh, area of low pressure we've had for quite a while. It's going to give a jet stream a bit of bit of oomph, and uh, next week this might give us uh, a rather more unsettled or changeable uh, flavour to the weather. It might start to really give this ridge that we've been under for a very long time now might start to give it a bit of a uh, give a, give it a bit of a pasting. So uh, we could be in line for a bit of a change next week. We talked about this chance of a more showery. Uh, cooler, slightly more changeable interlude uh, coming up over the uh, middle part of July, just in the second half of the month. Still on course now, and actually models have upgraded it a little bit, so they've got a more unsettled flavour to them uh, this morning. I'll talk you through everything that's going on uh, right now. So begin by having a look at the tropics. So let's start with this uh, yellow X down here in the Caribbean. Uh, that was... Um, Hurricane Beryl, that's now been uh, moved into a uh, sort of disturbance area, they say, an area of showers and thunderstorms associated with the remnants of Beryl. It's producing locally heavy rainfall and strong gusty winds over the north, east and Caribbean Sea. Uh, and the disturbance is expected to move west northwestwards for the next day or so, passing over Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico today. Uh, and then uh, it's not really expected to do a great deal more. This one is a little bit more substantial up here. This is a tropical storm. This is a tropical storm uh, Chris off the eastern seaboard of the United States. For this one, uh, it's got, got uh, maximum sustained winds of 50 knots, uh, which is 60 miles an hour. And it's a fairly vigorous storm. It is, is actually forecast to go uh, towards hurricane status. This is the forecast from the National Hurricane uh, centre for um, Chris. So there it is as a tropical storm right now. In the next few hours, it is actually forecast to go up to hurricane uh, status as it carries on pushing uh, northwards to the west of Bermuda. Um, so still at hurricane status there on Thursday uh, off the coast of northeastern America uh, by then. It gets up towards Canada, sort of Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, and it's downgraded to a tropical storm at that point off the coast of Canada. And then it'll veer out into uh, the northern part of the Atlantic Ocean. It'll just become an area of low pressure. But at that point, it gets caught up in the jet stream. We may well see Chris giving us uh, a rather um, different complexion to the weather next week. So this is the uh, 500 bit of our height anomaly flow chart uh, from the Penn State University. We've got the ECMWF here on the top, the GFS, which have a look at the moment on the bottom, 500 bit of our 10,000 meters area in the atmosphere, high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream running above. Blue extrapolates to low pressure, uh, yellow, red and orange to high pressure. These are the mean flow charts for 7 to 10 days' time, which takes us into the second half of July. We go up to the 19th of July. And look at this, something that we've not had for a very, very long time, an area of below average heights, low pressure, centred just to the west of the UK and Ireland, with the jet stream coming southwards uh, as well. We do still have the remains of the high pressure we've been under for a very long time, sitting two hour north and two hour northeast. But it looks as though it's been pushed quite a long way from us by this area of low pressure. That's definitely a change on anything we've had for quite some time. Uh, and then this is the GFS. It's actually deeper with the area of low pressure on this morning's GFS. A really very deep area of low pressure indeed at the time of year, sitting just to the west, uh, northwest of the 
country again the jet stream and the flow is coming through rather like that now whether once the energy from x hurricane chris gets out of the system we would see this low pressure dissipating and we very quickly go back to high pressure which is certainly a possibility uh, i'm not sure but it does look like a change is on the way now uh, for just beyond the middle part of the month GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles look like this. So the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average. We're hot today. We'll be cooling down, though, over the next couple of days. to so go for a slightly cooler phase Tuesday, Wednesday. Then the second half of the week and into weekend is turning uh, really very warm again and quite humid. Uh, to beyond that as we go into next week bit of a drop down in the temperature only going down to average though so we're not talking about anything particularly uh, cool but as we blow this Atlantic air through I think it will start to feel quite a lot fresher uh, through the course of next week and more precipitation spikes than we've seen for a long time on these charts as well so a lot of dry weather coming up for the rest of this week but into the weekend and then on to next week we do have uh, a lot of precipitation spikes showing up there bear in mind that is for manchester so it's exposed to those westerly winds that look like they're going to break through over the weekend and into next week which means you're exposed to showers along the spells of rain but we haven't seen an ensemble chart as wet as that for a very 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 long time and if it did come off i think that would even take some useful rain down into the far south southeast probably temporarily i assume we will go back to high pressure fairly quickly but um Quite a change showing up there uh, on this morning's GFS Ensembles. Temperature anomalies for the next week, going from the 9th to 17th of July, are still coming out warmer than average. The next few days will be uh, very warm uh, indeed. Precipitation anomalies show a little bit of a change. Still drier than average to the east of the UK, but actually many northern and western parts of the UK are going towards average or perhaps even slightly above average uh, rainfall anomalies over the next week. That's really quite a significant change indeed. Down in the south and southeast, still drier uh, than average, however, uh, down there as the anomaly for the next week. So, this is how things are looking on Thursday. And over here, we have the, what will still be then, I think, Hurricane uh, Chris, right over on the very far left-hand chart as you are looking at it over towards Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. Keep an eye on that area of low pressure. For us on Thursday, we're under this area of high pressure. It's all very slack, so we might have some thunderstorms breaking out, but it'll be getting warmer again as well. So that's how things are looking on Friday. Still under that warm ridge, but with risk of some thunderstorms. That's be by then tropical storm. Uh, Chris, which will be off the coast of Newfoundland, beginning to heading towards the North Atlantic. Uh, this is Saturday, uh, so by then we're just talking about an area of low pressure. It's been downgraded to just an area of low pressure, but that's the remains of uh, Chris just there. We've got this area of low pressure to the south of Greenland as well. Uh, still under this ridge, so warm uh, on Saturday, perhaps very warm. There's the upper air temperatures. They do look very warm into the weekend this is sunday so we bring this area of low pressure in from off the atlantic it's giving the jet stream a little bit more of a uh, push as well so we find this ridge is starting to flatten off as wet and windy weather begins to move into the northwest and as this pushes into the hot and humid air that's been established over country for a long time it may produce some thundery weather upper air temperatures are still very warm on Saturday, but on Sunday, I should say, but by Monday, a week away, have actually pushed through a cold front and turned the wind into the west northwest. So it's a proper change coming through on Monday with a west northwesterly wind heading in. Upper air temperatures are lowering quite a bit as the hot, humid air is being um, pushed away into uh, central parts of Europe. And then we go into quite an unsettled GFS run then through the rest of next week. We keep this area of low pressure just to the northwest of Scotland. So with showers revolving around this area of low pressure, maybe even some more general bands 
of rain too. Upper air temperatures are relatively low, so quite a lot cooler through the course of next week. Uh, beyond day 10, low pressure remains close to us. So again, showers, possibly longer spells of rain continuing up to the 20th of uh, July. That's the 21st, so it's really, really unsettled. GFS might be going over top with that. That's a really big change compared to what we've had. Uh, recently. That is a vigorous area of low pressure we've got over top of the country on Saturday, 21st of July. Beyond that, the high pressure has another go at building in the very extended range to the south and east. That starts to drag up much warmer air from the south. Yeah, but it all looks very, uh, very unstable, that. So we'll quickly go into uh, thunderstorms, I think. Um, really unstable. So not a, not, not a stable ridge like we've had over the past few weeks. Uh, this is E7F, yeah. so again, we're under that ridge on Thursday. It all looks rather slack with the risk of some thunderstorms into the weekend. Here's the low pressures beginning to get their act together in the Atlantic, starting to try and uh, give us an attack. That's Monday, 16th of July, so not push that low pressure through as quickly as the GFS does. However, we have got low pressure in the Atlantic and eventually it does break through and sends us into what looks like quite an unsettled pattern through the course of uh, next week. So definitely going towards changeable, maybe not as unsettled as the GFS is, but um, certainly the ECM is trending towards things turning more changeable uh, next week as well. GM looking like that. So, again, under the ridge, could be some thunderstorms around uh, at the weekend, uh, at the end of week and into weekend. Then this low pressure starts to move through, very similar to what the ECM and GFS are showing. So, eventually, we finish up to quite an unsettled looking situation. That's uh, day 10, Thursday, 19th of July. Low pressure is around the country, so at the very least there'll be showers, long spells, rain. And with the air coming from sort of the northern part of the Atlantic Ocean, the upper air temperatures do look quite a bit cooler uh, as well. So signs of a change here, uh, most definitely, starting at the weekend and then particularly going through to uh, next week. What does CFS V2 say? These are the 500 middle hour height anomalies broken down into uh, weekly periods. The first weekly period takes us from the 9th through to 15th of July. The anomaly for the coming week still has this big ridge centred close to the country, so still lots of dry uh, and very warm uh, weather on offer for the uh, next week. Then we go through to week 2, which is the 16th, 22nd of July. This is when the uh, free G GFS, ECM and GM models are indicating the change something more changeable. So we do see a weakening of the ridge with the CFS. Low pressure is around Iceland. There's more of an influence from the jet stream. So the CFS is a little bit in between, in between really, compared to the shorter range models. Not as unsettled as those shorter range models, but certainly implying that the jet stream and the Atlantic is getting a little bit more uh, stronger there through that week. Then we go through to the 23rd to 29th of July, with above average heights to the east of the country, below average heights just to northern Scotland, the flow of the jet will be doing something rather like that. So still quite warm, but probably unstable. And I think we'd see thunderstorms uh, breaking out there. And then we go through to week four, which is the 30th of July to the 5th of August, with uh, below average heights, low pressure around Iceland, the Atlantic coming through with a jet stream like that. That does look like it's rather unsettled and relatively cool as well for the very start of August. Temperature anomalies are looking like this the week ahead, substantially hotter than average. It will be another very warm week to come. Uh, week 2, the 16th, 22nd of July, that one is warmer than average, not quite as hot as it is in uh, week 1, but still warmer than average. Week 3 temperature anomalies are above average for the south, going closer to average for the north, and then by the time we get through to week 4, which takes us to the start of August, Actually, the temperature anomaly is lowering down to be close to average. Precipitation anomaly is substantially drier than average in the week ahead. So another very warm and dry week coming up. Then week two precipitation anomalies are close to average. So obviously it's more unsettled in that week. Also close to average with week three precipitation anomalies for the 23rd, 29th of July. 
And then again, close to average in week four. So after the coming week, which is still very dry, it does look like we get more precipitation. Not necessarily overly wet. It's not going over above average rainfall. But certainly more precipitation than we've been used to. So I think we are on course for a bit of a change uh, over the um, next week to 10 days. Up to the weekend, it still looks mainly dry, and it will become very warm again as we get towards the weekend, even hot down in the south by the end of the week, temperature will be back to 30 degrees. Over the weekend, probably a growing uh, threat of heavy showers, downpours, and thunderstorms as the atmosphere just begins to turn that bit more unstable. And then by the end of the weekend, and then this time next week, possibly pushing the Atlantic through. If the Atlantic does break through, then we might go into uh, our most unsettled phase that we've had for several weeks. How long that lasts is the big question. Is it just a temporary blip to what has been a very hot and dry summer so far? Is it just a temporary breakdown and we get ourselves back to high pressure quickly? Or will it be something more substantial? We can't yet answer that question. But obviously over the next few days of updates, we will be looking to see... Uh, whether the signs are there that the Azores high is coming back. I think it probably will do, but we'll have to wait and see, uh, and all will be revealed in the updates over the next few days. But certainly signs of a change in around a week's time. Right, that's all for now. Later on today, we'll have a look at uh, some events and festivals that will be coming up over the uh, weekend. So if you're interested in, I think, Latitude Festival, I think like Brentwood Festival, if you're interested in those, uh, come back uh, later on today. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.